Hey guys, Alex here. Um, so I did an intro prior, but it didn't exactly work out as well as I wanted it to. So I'm just redoing it now. But basically what I ended up doing is I went and grabbed Anthony and Andrew, and uh, we ended up painting um, all my trim for my interior. Well, not all of it, but my B and C pillars. And also did my valve cover gasket and uh, painted my valve cover. So hopefully you guys uh, watch this video and enjoy it. So we got that bolt off. Um, what size is that socket? I just kind of felt it out. I didn't really uh, check it. 916. 916. Okay, so 916s will work. Probably not the 100% accurate one because I know that they like to use metric and um, for, like import cars. But basically, just get your fingers in here and pull it out. Just gently, you know, because you don't want to break anything. Just kind of, if you have to, you might have to pull off this piece in there and that just comes right out just like that and they're gonna clean it up and then paint it up um, the paint I got is a uh, Krylon color master paint and primer hashtag not sponsored could be sponsored uh, but uh, yeah it's actually pretty good stuff I mean just you know use it carefully um, so yeah that's pretty much how you get the C pillar off these guys are working on the B pillars right now uh, I'll show you what they got going on so as you can see with Anthony he's just grabbing the um, seat belt and making sure he gets it nice and you know pulled so because the last thing you want is to have it like get locked up and then not be able to use your seat belt because that would suck and then you're like oh man I gotta do the whole thing but anyway Anthony go ahead and uh, show them how you pop it off like so grab your fingers in the top and then just pull it out and then it slides up and out. yep slide it up and there you go it's almost out there you go and yeah, so then you have the piece out. And we got three of four out, so that's how we're starting it. Gotta keep on going. So we got all the pieces off. They're uh, actually in the trailer right now. Um, got a lot of car parts here I need to get rid of. They're all just kind of sitting there and not doing anything anyway. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I got some gloves on and I'm gonna actually like clean up the, the painted or painting surfaces um, or surfaces that need to be painted. So that, that way <clears throat> it'll be nice and clean and the, pl the plastic will adhere properly to the paint. Um, I got the primer and paint. So it's like, you know, a one piece. I got that specifically so that it wouldn't be so difficult to actually, uh, you know, just get it all done. The only downside I've realized so far is that if you're not careful, it will chip. Um, I'm pretty sure I probably need to put a clear coat on, but whatever. I'm not really too worried about it. It'll just make it easier to peel off later if I decide to change the colors of everything. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get to work on that now, and we'll see how that goes.
So Andrew's upstairs. Well, upstairs. Um, he's uh, he's outside. He's spraying some of the um, the center console off because my previous job I was do I had painted it, and when I painted it, um, it was the part for the um, it's part. Of, it's not the center console. It's like the the AC and stereo bezel. Um, so when I painted it, it started to rain on me, and I don't really have a paint booth. I don't really have much of an option here, so I got outside. Um, I mean, I could make a paint booth, but man. anyway, so he's he's cleaning up the other piece up there. He's spraying it off because uh, if you let it sit in royal purple, um, and can I see that tub real quick? So I got this garbage can, garbage bin, and it's just full of like royal purple. Oh shit! Oops. Um, whatever. It'll buff out. <laughs> Uh, so that stuff, you know, it peels off paint if you let it sit for a while. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have that sanded down and then I'm gonna repaint that. In the meantime, I gotta clean up all the rest of the interior little trim pieces. Um, so like these guys, and these guys. So yeah, that's my plan now while the other stuff dries for a minute. So I might actually give it a quick coat real quick before I actually, uh, clean everything off so we'll see what happens but yeah that's the plan yeah. Anthony yeah uh, your brother's calling you so generally you're supposed to sand it but the problem with sanding it with these plastic pieces is even when you sand it as smooth as possible, in my experience anyway, because I use like 800 grit, which is pretty smooth. Um, I mean, it's not like 2,500 grit or whatever, or 3,000 grit, but in my experience, like, get airplanes. Uh, anyway, it doesn't exactly stay smooth. It kind of makes it all choppy. I don't know. Not about that. So, that's the reason why I'm not doing that. Though I know it generally would be better because it helps it adhere properly, but, you know, it is what it is. Can't really do much about it. Another coat. I forget this. Got a few of the bolts for the for screws it's popped off. We got one, two, three. There's eight in total. You want to take off. You're also gonna want to take off your uh, coil packs to make sure that you can actually get them off. This uh, aftermarket uh, airbox rod thing is kind of in my way, so I'm just gonna move it for now put this right here next to the sockets keep everything together as much as possible while you can you know because you don't want to lose anything it's the last thing you want to do so you're like oh crap so we're trying to keep them all together so let's see if I can get this in here yep kind of so I got three off so far I don't know for sure that the valve cover gaskets need to be done, but I also don't know when the last time they were done. So this will just give me like ease of mind, or you know, peace of mind. Not to mention I'm having misfire codes in all four cylinders. So I figure if there's, I mean, it has a minor oil leak, but I figure if I replace the gaskets, it might help. I really I don't. See the oil leaks out of right here yeah. a little bit. Well, that's because there's no grommet there to stop it. You have to get some ratcheting wrench or something down there in the bottom. Are those tens? Well, oh, I can't reach them. I have to get a shorter ten. So I had to get a ratcheting wrench because it wasn't wanting to come out with me or for me. There we go. Because I couldn't reach in there with the ratchet. 
That's so ratchet. So ratchet. <clears throat> Take. Yeah, at that point I'm just spinning around the freaking washer because I was trying to grip it, but it was just very little room in here. Hmm. Damn, sun is in my face. Side of my face. There we go. There we go. Is it not loosening? Can you tighten it? No. It's listening. Oh, oh shit, it's just fucking stripping. No way. You gotta be kidding me. What? Do you want me to pause it? <sighs> no, it's alright. Um, I might be able to fit this the ratchet in there. Just because I can use the extension. Ho ho ho! People over here. What the hell's going on with this place? It's getting run down. <laughs> going out of business. Yeah. Ooh. That's yeah. a brushing. Where are we at here? I'm just taking out this sixth bolt right here. Too many cans in the engine bay already. Alright. We still got a mission mode. Huh? So, it took us a while because we had to finagle a little bit, but as you can see, one and two. It's right here and here and on the bottom corners. Um, it was held in by liquid gasket, which is kind of annoying because it seeped into the actual head. I don't know if you can tell, but we got it like right, let's see, hard to see with the, this light being blocked, but right here. So right in there that you can kind of tell I hope you see that black circle right here that's some liquid gasket and it's like that in a couple locations so I got to scrape that clean uh, just a heads up if you do this you will leak oil you can see all that that's all oil um, it's not a lot but it's enough to be noticed it's like probably I don't know maybe half a quart um, so I my left side I didn't have a bucket my right side I don't know if you can see down there I got a bucket it's not very much but it's enough um, it's also got oil under the car. Kind of see right there where it spilled and a little bit over there. It's not too much. You know, make sure you clean up your workspace afterwards, of course. But the reason why I decided to do it like this is because there was oil all up on my exhaust. And it just, it smelled horrible when I drove. I couldn't do it anymore. So I highly recommend uh, doing this job if you have no idea if when the last time it was done. Just, you know, for peace of mind. Um... The gaskets were actually all stuck to the actual head itself. Uh, the crankshafts look okay. Um, kind of hard to tell, but you know they're a little gunked up. But you know, just clean them up. So that's my plan. Just clean them up. You got some. It looks like metal shavings right there, or dirt, or whatever. But yeah, just do that. Um, cleaned up all the gunk and grime as much as possible from the valve covers. I painted them with some um, VHT very high temp flame proof header paint. I figured that would be better than their standard uh, you know, valve cover paint. Uh, I painted it with some primer first. Um, I sanded it all down so all the gunk was all off there. Sanded it down and then put on some of the gray primer um, and then I put on two coats of white paint. Oh, but this is what I got so far. So it looks pretty good in my opinion. Not perfect, but you know, it's gonna be in the engine bay. It's not like it's gonna, you know, be seen 24 seven. It's just, you know, heat dispersion and it's supposed to look better than, you know, standard stocks, gross, grody, silverish color. I don't personally like silver, you know, it's my personal preference, but um, so yeah, that's what we've got so far. And then after it's done drying uh, for the third coat, which I'm about to put on right now in just a second, yeah, it's still a little tacky. Um, 
after I'm done with the third coat, I'm gonna, th you know, let it dry and then throw it all back together and hope to God that's okay. There's been a lot of liquid gasket that I've needed to remove. It's been a real bad pain in the ass. Um, every freaking corner where it's at, it's just, it's obnoxious. But um, I painted the rest of the trim pieces. That I'm letting them dry right now, um, the interior. Um, so other than that, just a matter of bolting it all back up and hopefully being done ASAP because I'm running out of daylight at 735. So I probably got like another hour and a half or so of sunlight, maybe, maybe, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. Um, my friends have been really helpful. They've helped me out a lot, Anthony and Andrew. And then Nicole showed up too. Um, they've been, you know, we, we fixed Nicole's rattling of her heat shields for her exhaust. Um, so now the, Anthony and Andrew have been working their asses off and getting that uh, liquid gasket removed so that's pretty much where we're at now um but other than that all i gotta do really is just let the paint dry and then put it all back together so um that's pretty much the hardest part it's another day um it's actually a couple days later so what happened was my buddy and i well buddies and i were working on my car uh and when we were doing the um the valve cover gaskets <sighs> tightening down the uh, the bottom I guess you could say front because it's technically the one closest to the bumper tightening down the bottom front uh, corner of the valve cover gasket uh, or valve cover and it was the screw closest to the bumper and somehow I don't know how but broke the freaking uh, screw inside the, the actual head of the car so now I've got to figure out how I'm going to get it out. I have a few ideas, but it's not even like that it's, it's able to be grabbed by a set of pliers or anything. It's actually broken like inside of it. So there's like a good centimeter um, of a gap between the actual face of the, um, the mounting point, I guess you could call it, of where the parts meet and um, where the actual screws threads are. So <clears throat> it's actually inside there pretty deep. <laughs> Um, so I have no idea how I'm going to get it out. S silly cat. He keeps on trying to like rub up against my legs. He's, he does this every single time I try and write, record something. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so this is what a screw should look like. Uh, one, one of them should look like. You can kind of, it's kind of blurry, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about. How it's like, you know, it's kind of thin. Well, this is the one that broke. But anyway, so it broke off inside the head. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get it out. Um, I'm thinking reverse drill bit set. Um, I got that in the trunk, but with how small it is, I don't know if I really like that idea. But there's no really, not really any other choice. That's that's my main problem at the moment. Um, so my car is currently not running. I was trying to see if maybe if it would still drive okay um, without that issue, but unfortunately it's leaking like an sob. Um, but other than that, the good thing is I got the painting done for the most part. So stage one of the painting, or stage two, I guess you could say, of the painting part is done. So um, other than that, I'll get back to you. I'm running out of memory, so I'll see you guys later.